So video game producers have a history of holding us to ransom in exchange for some short-lived entertainment, especially if you're talking about Call of Duty, where the entertainment only lasts until a random magnetic grenade bounces off 16 walls, 3 cars and a teammate's forehead to land squarely between your feet. And with the rise in the number of people succumbing to these ransoms, game producers have slowly started demanding more and more, just to see how much they can get away with. It started with increased game prices and quickly became a DLC season pass and microtransaction orgy. You have more chance of finding a junkie with teeth than a AAA game title that doesn't have some sort of loot box in it these days. But before I get into the rant, let's talk about the big story that's been grinding everyone's gears recently. <laughs> So EA have a bit of a reputation when it comes to milking the old cash cow, be it through pay to win packs in FIFA's Ultimate Team or the additional content in The Sims. They've been around the block enough times to know how to whip down a gamer's pants and take them for a ride. However, the launch of their new game Star Wars Battlefront 2 has brought to light just how greedy EA actually are. In their infinite wisdom, they decided to put most of the playable characters behind an unlock wall. However, after Big Shaq did some quick maths, it was discovered that it could take up to 4,528 hours in-game to unlock all the playable characters. Aye, 187 days of in-game time. Now I love gaming as much as the next man, but Big Buzz Aldrin could have flown to the moon and back 30 times before you've unlocked Darth Vader. Needless to say, that's not really an option for anyone who can't commit 8 hour shifts every day for the next year and a half. So the other option is, you've guessed it, microtransactions, where you can pay the small fee of 3 99 to buy a couple of crates. Big Shaq on the quick maths again reckons you might have to spend as much as 2 grand to get them all. If that wasn't bad enough, EA have been in talks with CSGO Lotto, I think, to try get their business model, because as it turns out, loot boxes are random. They don't guarantee you anything. So in effect, they're basically encouraging gambling. When you can't even trust kids to eat their cocoa pops without making a mess, there's a good chance they probably shouldn't be trusted not to max out your credit card in a bid to find a Jabba the Hutt playable character that doesn't even exist. Alright, mate. Thankfully though, a few countries have seen sense and decided to try and ban loot boxes. In response to all the negative publicity and outrage, Disney has put on hold the game's loot crates to protect the Star Wars brand. However, EA states they will be returning to the game, because without them they can't make a profit. Because the $2 billion a year profit they make just is they enough to pay the lecky bill, apparently. In other words, they'll wait till the bad publicity dies down before they resume with the financial shafting. Call of Duty, the yearly reskin of a once average first person shooter. This year, they launched World War 2, a boots on the ground game. Needless to say, sales have went better this year because they finally went back to how it should have been. But as with EA, COD has been determined to make money, ever since the series went down the shitter with every game since Modern Warfare 2. So they launched their game with 10 multiplayer maps, one of which you can only access if you buy the season pass for 50 quid. They launched the game with day one downloadable content. Not only that, but they've launched COD points as an in-game currency bought through microtransactions that can be used to buy, you've guessed it, loot crates. COD have made the excuse though that you don't need to buy loot crates, they can be earned through in-game play. And while that's true, very similar to EA, you've got to sacrifice your marriage, employment status and the future use of your legs just to get some. I've spent almost three and a half days in-game and still haven't unlocked weapon variants for the bar or STG, the two guns I use more than any other. Maybe not as bad as the EA scam, but when you consider COD is also doing yearly DLCs at 50 quid a pop, you're talking 100 quid a year just to play the game in maps. Plus all the money you're probably going to spend on loot crates to unlock the weapons. You're looking at a grand a year to play Call of Duty, before you've paid for your console, headset, controller, battery packs and internet connections. So what's been happening in the gaming world? AAA game producers are exploiting the money right out of our pockets. Gaming is slowly becoming one of the most expensive hobbies purely based on this producer greed. EA made profits of $566 million in the first quarter of this year, yet they still want to tax everybody with microtransactions. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not totally against the idea of DLC and microtransactions, but I don't want to have to pay for the DLC on launch day just to play the full game or pay microtransactions to a game they'll fix for like 6 months before they move on to their next money making scheme. If say for example you launched a game like Destiny 1 and they stuck to the original plan of updating it regularly and adding new things in for the next 10 years then yeah, I could maybe understand the need for microtransactions or subscriptions to fund the continued development. But when you're launching a game yearly and you're not fixing clear issues with the servers and in-game glitches because you've realised that if you type 58008 into a calculator and turn it upside down, it's boobs, 
then you've no justification for microtransactions. Fix and launch the proper game that everyone paid 50 quid for before you worry about the additional ways to make us pay through the nose. Now you'll notice I've only had a go at AAA titles with these microtransactions, and that's because I fully support free-to-play games that have optional microtransactions that don't affect the gameplay at all. Producers need to make money to fund the game, and that's alright, because when you're giving away a game for free, you do have to make money somehow. Anyway, that's my rant over. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, I'll be streaming some Call of Duty Zombies on Twitch tonight if anyone's interested. The link to that's going to be in the top of the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. I never said I'm the nicest guy in the world, but I'd rather die for my girl. I'ma buy her diamonds and pearls. And that don't mean that she's materialistic. I know she fell in love with me because I'm a lyrical misfit. We stare in the whip and the sunshine and cheering and singing. He's saying, I'm in love with the shape of you.